right, talk to me about your hopes for this project and, and where you want it to go. Well, as a, as a filmmaker, you know, we, and doing films for networks and stuff, you know, it's, we're always looking for that one serious project, that one, I guess you call it a legacy project that when you're done, you re, you remember by this one film. Uh, from Inmate to Mayor, I feel, is that project for me. It is. It's, it's um, like Tommy was saying, we know how a mayor becomes an inmate, but we don't know how an inmate becomes a mayor. That was just fascinating to me. So when I met the mayor, and I, and I, I saw his book, and I read his book, and I'm speaking with him, and it's like, how did you overcome this? It was very captivating to me. So as a filmmaker, part of my job is to take a story and build on this story, and then it's released out to the world. So from inmate to mayor was just a remarkable story to me. It's a true story, and it's a story of hope. And I think that the society we're in, especially as young African Americans, we need that story. Is this going to be like a major motion picture? Is it independent? Is there a studio behind it? Well, well, it starts. It starts off as an independent, and then what happens is we get the uh, uh, the major studios involved, and I don't think that's that that would be a problem. Because of the the story in itself, you know, it's, it's almost like my job and Tommy's job is a little easy because the story just tells itself. And we was wondering, you know, is this going to be a film? Could this be a series? Because the mayor has so many stories through his life that we was even thinking series. But uh, it starts off as an independent with a, uh, a network. We're shopping to a network such as the HBO, the stars, and then we get them involved and then it becomes the uh, motion picture. Just kind of tell me about how you came to be involved in mm -hmm. the project and kind of where we are with things, where this is all going, mm -hmm. and what you're hoping to accomplish. You know, I got involved with um, this project with my business partner and, and, and producing partner, Chris um, Donaldson, said, listen, I had a great experience. I met this cat who was an a, a, a inmate, and now he's mayor. He wrote this book. I'm like, hold on. Most folk I know start off mayor and now they inmates. And now you're telling me that this guy actually overcame all the the the, 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 the bad choices that he made to become triumph and I thought that was fascinating. I thought it was fascinating for many reasons. Personally, my biological father was in prison most of my life. So I spent most of my life being that kid whose daddy was in prison. So I understand how it feels that see it, being a prisoner is not only about the stigma of not being trusted, the stigma of making a bad choice, the stigma of being perceived as a bad guy, but it affects everyone who loves you. So I was told, boy, you're going to be just like your daddy. Boy, you ain't no good just like your daddy. So this story was very fascinating to me because I spent most of my life running toward the things I run from, meaning spent most of my life proving to the world that I am not going to be just like my dad. I am not going to make the same choices. However, it is something that once my dad got out of prison, I, he was such a beautiful person that I couldn't believe this was the same person who did all the things you accused me of, accused him of. So it was clear to me at an early age that because one makes a bad choice, one makes um, bad choices doesn't make them bad people necessarily. So this, this, this um, story was very fascinating to me because it's a story about hope, it's a story about never giving up. It was a story that, that was personal to me because I had to prove to the world that I, yeah, my daddy was a prisoner, that doesn't make me a prisoner. Yes, my daddy was a felon, doesn't make me a felon. And it's the same challenge that I see young men and women having after they get out of prison and say, life is not over, that there is still hope. Um, I work with another organization called Suited for Success. It was a nonprofit organization that when men and women come out of prison, particularly in men in this instance, we've teamed up with like men's warehouse. They help to actually help us give them clothes and suits and train them how to go into interviews and get them dressed and prepared for it. So this is a very, the subject matter itself was very dear, very personal for me.